In the quiet waters of the Gulf of Mexico, a revolution is taking shape. Ships without sailors, fleets without crews. While America's Navy struggles with delays and cost overruns, a former Navy SEAL has quietly assembled what might become the most advanced manufacturing facility on Earth. This is Port Alpha, a $2.5 billion gamble that could either restore American naval dominance or mark the end of traditional shipbuilding forever. The crisis facing America's Navy runs deeper than most people realize. McKinsey reports reveal a startling fact. America has gone from building 5% of the world's ocean-going ships in the 1970s to just 0.2% today. The Congressional Budget Office reveals that America's current shipbuilding programs are running three years behind schedule on average. The Columbia-class submarine, crucial to nuclear deterrence, faces delays of over a year. The new Constellation-class frigate won't arrive until 2029 instead of 2026. The scope of the problem becomes clear when you examine specific programs. The Virginia-class attack submarines are running 36 months behind schedule. The future Enterprise aircraft carrier faces delays of 18 to 26 months. The Navy plans to retire 13 more ships than it will commission over the next three years, shrinking the fleet to just 283 ships by 2027. Meanwhile, the shipbuilding industrial base faces unprecedented challenges. Skilled welders, naval architects, and marine engineers are in desperately short supply. The Navy recently spent over a billion dollars just trying to attract new workers to build submarines. Enter Dino Mavrukas, whose story begins on September 11, 2001. Studying computer engineering at Rutgers University, just 45 minutes from Lower Manhattan, he watched the towers fall and felt what he describes as a profound call to serve. After graduating, Mavrukas enlisted in the Navy, dedicating 11 years to service with SEAL Team 2 and the Naval Special Warfare Development Group. Eight combat tours gave him first-hand understanding of how advanced military technology protects American forces. After leaving the military in 2015, he earned an MBA from Wharton and spent five years as a technology investor at Vista Equity Partners. But that same drive from September 11th never left him. In March 2022, Mavrukas left his lucrative private equity career to found Saronic Technologies in Austin, Texas. Two decades after that fateful day at Rutgers, Mavrukas would launch a project that could fundamentally reshape naval warfare itself. Saronic isn't trying to build better ships. They're building ships that don't need people at all. Their autonomous surface vessels represent a fundamental shift in naval thinking. These aren't remote-controlled boats. They're fully autonomous systems capable of making tactical decisions navigating complex environments and engaging targets without human intervention. The company currently produces three classes of vessels from their 420,000 square foot factory in Austin. The Spyglass, just six feet long, serves as reconnaissance. The Cutlass, at 14 feet, carries sophisticated sensors. The Corsair, at 24 feet, can travel over 1,000 nautical miles and support significant weapons payloads. But the real breakthrough came in April 2025 with the Marauder, a 150-foot autonomous vessel. This ship can loiter at sea for 30 days, travel 3,500 nautical miles, and carry up to 40 metric tons of equipment. Unlike traditional warships requiring crews of hundreds, the Marauder operates entirely without human presence. The strategic implications are staggering. Traditional warships cost hundreds of millions and require years to build. Aircraft carriers approach $13 billion each and need crews of over 5,000 sailors. But autonomous vessels can be produced at a fraction of the cost and deployed in much larger numbers. The Texas Gulf Coast has emerged as the leading candidate for Port Alpha's location. Defense News reports that Texas offers unique advantages, existing shipbuilding infrastructure, access to testing waters, and proximity to skilled aerospace and defense manufacturing workers. However, Saronic hasn't waited for Port Alpha's final location decision. In April 2025, the company acquired Gulfcraft, a Louisiana-based shipbuilder located in Franklin. This 100-acre facility will serve as the immediate prototyping and production hub for medium unmanned surface vessels, starting with the Marauder. The Gulfcraft acquisition provides Saronic with immediate production capacity. The Franklin facility has over 60 years of experience delivering both traditional and unmanned vessels for commercial and defense applications. 
Saronic plans to invest $250 million directly into the Louisiana shipyard to modernize infrastructure and acquire new machinery. The company has retained Gulfcraft's experienced workforce and expects to create more than 500 new jobs over the next three to four years, producing up to 50 unmanned surface vessels annually. Port Alpha represents something unprecedented in American shipbuilding. In February 2025, Saronic announced plans for what they call the most advanced shipyard in the world. Funded by a massive $600 million Series C investment round that valued the company at $4 billion, Port Alpha will require an investment of over $2.5 billion. The facility is designed to produce hundreds of unmanned vessels annually while creating thousands of new jobs. This isn't just about building more ships, it's about fundamentally reimagining how ships get built. Traditional shipyards use techniques that haven't fundamentally changed since World War II. Port Alpha will be designed from the ground up around modern manufacturing principles, like Tesla's automated assembly lines or electronics manufacturers that produce thousands of devices daily. Instead of craftsmen slowly welding hull sections, Port Alpha will use advanced robotics, precision manufacturing and modular construction. The goal is to build at a scale not seen since World War II, when American shipyards produced over 2,700 Liberty ships in less than four years, launching a new vessel every day. Port Alpha aims to recreate that mass production capability with autonomous vessels that require no crew training, no life support systems, and no human considerations in their design. Saronic's ships use artificial intelligence, advanced sensors, and sophisticated software to navigate complex environments. They can identify and track targets, coordinate with other vessels, and adapt to changing tactical situations without human input. This autonomy extends beyond navigation. The vessels execute complex mission profiles, including reconnaissance, surveillance, electronic warfare, and direct engagement. They use machine learning algorithms that improve performance over time, analyzing operations and adjusting tactics accordingly. All vessels share the same autonomy stack, meaning software developed for smaller platform scales directly to larger vessels like the Marauder. This modular approach reduces development costs and accelerates deployment of new capabilities. Autonomous vessels can be designed around their weapon systems, optimizing everything for maximum combat effectiveness. They can accelerate harder, turn tighter, and operate in environments dangerous for crewed ships. The modular design means different vessel types share common components, creating economies of scale impossible with traditional single-purpose warships. The Pentagon has taken notice. While Saronic doesn't yet have major Navy contracts, their technologies align with initiatives like the Replicator program, which aims to field thousands of autonomous systems across all military branches. Saronic signed two agreements with the Navy within 90 days of founding, allowing direct engagement between engineers and Navy personnel. This collaboration provided crucial insights into Navy requirements, allowing Saronic to map development to specific operational needs. The Navy has expressed clear interest in assembling a modern fleet combining staffed and unstaffed vessels. Admiral Lisa Franchetti's Project 33 war plan specifically emphasizes unmanned surface vessels as critical components for countering threats. The company has demonstrated their systems in live exercises, showcasing technology that impressed Navy observers and validated autonomous capabilities for coordinated operations. Port Alpha's production targets are ambitious. While traditional shipyards struggle to produce a few major vessels per year, Saronic envisions manufacturing hundreds of autonomous platforms annually from the completed facility. The economic model is revolutionary. Instead of massive upfront costs for traditional warships, autonomous vessels represent a shift toward affordable, attritable platforms. The Navy could lose dozens of autonomous ships in conflict and replace them within months rather than years. Saronic's solution to workforce challenges is designing around the problem. Instead of requiring traditional shipbuilding skills, Port Alpha will rely on software engineering, robotics, and advanced manufacturing. Many workers will come from aerospace, automotive, and technology backgrounds. The company has recruited engineers from Tesla, SpaceX, Palantir, and other technology giants. This cross-pollination brings fresh approaches to age-old shipbuilding challenges. Port Alpha's success could reshape not just naval warfare, but the entire defense industrial base. If autonomous manufacturing proves successful for ships, similar approaches could revolutionize aircraft, vehicles, and weapons production. 
The implications extend beyond military considerations. Port Alpha could demonstrate American leadership in advanced manufacturing, creating thousands of high-tech jobs and establishing new industrial capabilities. Success could attract international partners and customers, spreading American influence through technology exports. The project also challenges the established defense industry. Companies like General Dynamics, Huntington Ingalls and Lockheed Martin have dominated naval shipbuilding for decades, building a few extremely sophisticated and expensive platforms. Saronic's approach threatens this model by demonstrating that many naval missions can be accomplished with smaller, cheaper and more numerous autonomous systems. The risks are substantial. Autonomous weapon systems raise serious ethical and strategic questions. What happens when hundreds of AI-controlled warships patrol oceans with authority to engage targets independently? How do traditional rules of naval warfare apply when no human is present for split-second decisions? Technical challenges remain formidable. Autonomous systems stay vulnerable to electronic warfare, hacking and sophisticated countermeasures. Creating swarms of autonomous vessels that operate effectively without being compromised requires solving cybersecurity problems that don't exist with traditional platforms. Financial sustainability remains uncertain. While Saronic has raised impressive private capital, building and operating Port Alpha requires sustained investment over many years. Congressional support will be crucial, as lawmakers must choose between funding traditional shipbuilding programs and investing in newer, unproven technologies. The workforce transformation represents a massive undertaking. Port Alpha will need to train thousands of workers in advanced manufacturing, robotics and software integration. Unlike traditional shipbuilding, where skills develop over years, the new facility requires workers comfortable with constantly evolving technology. What makes this story compelling is its personal dimension. Dino Mavrukas didn't have to take on this challenge. After successful military service and a lucrative private equity career, he chose to bet his reputation and investors' money on a vision many consider impossible. That vision extends beyond building ships. Saronic aims to restore American confidence in its ability to innovate and manufacture at world-leading levels. Port Alpha could demonstrate that American workers, using American technology, can outproduce any competitor when given the right tools. The broader trend toward autonomy appears irreversible. Every major military invests in unmanned systems, and technologies enabling autonomous operation continue advancing rapidly. The question isn't whether autonomous vessels will become common, but which countries will lead their development and production. As tensions rise in critical waterways worldwide, the race to control the seas is accelerating. Port Alpha represents America's attempt to write the rules of future naval competition rather than simply responding to others' initiatives. The autonomous vessels rolling off Port Alpha's production lines could become the foundation of an entirely new kind of navy. Instead of massive, vulnerable platforms requiring thousands of crew members, future naval forces might consist of intelligent swarms of expendable vessels coordinating complex operations across vast distances. But that future remains uncertain. Port Alpha must prove that revolutionary manufacturing approaches can deliver on ambitious promises while navigating complex political and bureaucratic challenges that have frustrated defence innovation for decades. The stakes extend far beyond naval affairs. Port Alpha's success or failure will influence American confidence in its ability to compete with authoritarian competitors who can mobilise massive resources for strategic priorities. Success could inspire similar efforts across multiple industries, while failure might reinforce perceptions of American decline in critical manufacturing capabilities. The race to build the future of naval warfare has begun, and Port Alpha represents America's entry in that competition. Whether it proves sufficient to maintain American naval dominance remains to be determined. But one thing is certain, the outcome will shape the strategic landscape for decades to come, and the factories are already under construction in Louisiana while the search continues for Port Alpha's permanent home along the Texas coast.